See that uh, thing up there on the bullet board behind you? Yeah. Recognize it? It looks like uh, a maze. Isn't yes, it? it's a very famous maze at Hampton Court in England, and uh, you've worked mazes, I assume. Yeah, you? you can get little games and things. And All kinds of things. Some mouse at one side yeah. getting to the cheese in the other, or something like this. Well, before you leave today, I'm going to show you the secret of how to work any maze the first time. Any maze? Any maze. Yeah. It has to do with uh, with topology. Have you ever heard of topology? I've heard of topography. Well, this is topology. topology. In, in fact, you see these things here? A yes. sieve, a spring, a watering can, and a stand, and a, uh, well, all these things. All these things are related in some way, uh, according to a topologist. The related? Men who yes. And I think before you leave, you'll be able to pick out and put into a gr various groups these miscellaneous items. I don't know. They don't seem to have any similar and, characteristics. Well, well, let's start from the beginning. What What do you think that word topology means? You said you knew what? To Topography. What does that mean? Well, that means the study of the um, surface of the earth and the regions that different areas lie okay, in. Okay, now what then would you imagine topology to be? Well, it's... The top part study, means... Well, top, I guess surface. Surface, right. And ology? Um... I guess studying of surface? The, studying, uh, the study of surfaces. And by surfaces, they mean very complex ones. And that's a branch of higher mathematics that is uh, relatively recent, you know, within the last 20 or 30 years or something. Or actually, parts of it had come before that, but are really seriously studied. And today, you and I are going to have fun with some of the, the ideas and some of the tricks in it. And we're not going to get nearly as complicated as the real people who investigate topology. Okay. Uh, but let's start from the very beginning now. While it is true that it's a study of surfaces, we're going to start with just lines. And they, they study lines, but we're going to start with one other simple concept, a closed loop. And yeah, I'm going to, I have, I have, well, I have a puzzle for you. All right. Here's a rope, see it? Yep. And, uh, and knots are part of topology, because they, they, the idea that this is a, is a line and it doesn't make them any difference what you do with it, it's still a line mm -hmm. as far as topology is concerned, even though it's curved and crooked and all the rest of it. Well, my problem for you is, uh, I want you to put the, this uh, rope in a hand like that, and I want you to now tie a knot in the rope. That's easy. All right, I'll do it. Ah, don't let go. I didn't let go. Yes, you did. When? I Watch. Didn't... Try it again. All right, here. Have the rope, right? Yeah. Now, that means you're going to let go right there. Oh. You can't let go of the rope. All right, so... <laughs> Wait a minute. See, it comes out again. Now, the reason, the reason why that's, that's impossible to do, you, you realize, I think, without, without knowing too much about topology, is the people who study it say that a closed loop like this yes. is a closed loop regardless of what you do with it. Even if you tie what looks like a knot like this, you know, that kind of a knot in it, that still is a simple closed loop. Oh. See? It's the loop just yes. tied up. And you can't get a knot in it unless the knot is in the loop before it becomes a loop. Mm. See? But now, isn't that cheating? Well, now you can tie a knot in it, and you can't get that knot out. No. Because it's inside the closed loop. So what you have to do is somehow have the knot in the loop before you pick it up. You got it. Got what? My arms? Yes. Tie a knot in your arms. <laughs> All right. Pick up that in here. Pick up that in here, and now untie your arms. Hey, I did it! See? So when, when topologists study uh, the closed loop, which is one of their beginning ideas, they say that it doesn't make any difference where the knot is, whether it's in your hands or in the loop, because really, when you put that and that together, that's all one loop, isn't it? Yes, and you can't tie it. No, so you put the knot in beforehand. Well, now the idea of the closed loop is an important one in topology, and here is a clo another closed loop made out of solder. Mm -hmm. See it? A loop. A loop. Now I'm going to take the loop and distort it. It's still going to be a closed loop, though, right? Messed up closed loop. A messed up closed loop. And I'm going to form it into uh, a... Notice I'm not changing the, no. the loop as far as its loopness is concerned. Now, 
I want you to put your finger in in one of those loops and tell me whether it's inside the loop or outside the loop. Um, in any of these? Yes. Well, both are inside. Mm, I'll take this no. one, for instance. Okay, now that one? Yeah, that's inside. See, it's inside all no, of that. No, that, remember that one. That's outside. Yeah, how can it be outside if it's inside? Well, now, one way, of course, would be to pull it to see whether your finger was left on the inside of the loop. But topologists have studied this, and they figured there's a very simple way to do it without doing that. Watch. Here's another loop like that one, you see? Mm-hmm. Put your finger here on the outside. All right. Okay, now to cross into the inside, you're going to have to go over that line, right? All right. So put it in. Jump over the wall. Okay, now that's one. One. That's one line you've gone over. Now get it out. It doesn't make any difference where you go, whether you go out this way, that way, this way, this way. In order to get outside the loop, you have to cross over it once again. Yes. Okay. And to go back in, you cross Jump it again. again. So now, start on the outside. If yeah. you go over one line, you're in. Right. If you go over another line, you're out. Right. If you go over another line, you're in. Right. Another line, you're out. Right. Okay, now you can figure whether you're in or out on this one without ever taking it apart by simply, you, we took this one? No, this, this one. This one. Okay, now put your finger there and start out here. You know that's outside. Yeah, that's outside. Okay, we'll put one finger there and the other finger here. Keep that one around like that. All right, so I'll use this hand. Outside here. Out. Uh, jump over in. In. Out. Out. In. in out. Come out. Yeah, so you're on the outside. That can be pretty confusing, yeah, well, though. You're but outside, but you're inside. Yeah, well, you're really outside that loop. In fact, um, try this one. Let's see, out. Put your finger in there. Out. We'll keep track of it now. Okay. Out. In. Out. In. Okay, now hold your finger there. If it's in, when I pull it, it doesn't make any difference what I do to it. When I finish, I should still your be finger should be the on the inside the loop. You see, it is. It is. Yeah, it is. Now, that idea of, of being inside or outside the loop is the basis of many uh, plain parlor tricks. Maybe, you, maybe you've seen this one. Scissors, yep. string, and a spool. Mm -hmm. And the problem is to get the spool and the string out from the scissors. You Separate can't. Separate them. What, what do you mean you can't? Spool's too it big to go, go through the handle. Go through the handle. If you want to do this at home, get a pair of scissors and you can put a button on it or anything just so it's big enough so it won't go through one of those. You can and cut the string. <laughs> cut the string, that's not fair. Well... Notice, however, that that loop is a closed loop and that the scissors is not inside the loop. It's not? See, it goes in around here and comes around and doubles over here and goes back here. Oh, it's just wrapped around. So it's not inside the loop, so you should be able to get the loop out. Well, maybe you think so, but uh, I don't know. Well... See that end right there? Yeah. Take, pull that end up and loosen it up and follow around underneath through here and see what happens. That's it. Now bring it down underneath. Now do you see what you have to do? Well, yeah. Oh! Go the other way, the other way. Over the top. No, the, the, the string over the top of the spool. That's this. it. This. Like that. And now pull the spool. Right out! I didn't even use... A knife to cut the string. Yes, and now the point is that, the, that the, this loop is not inside that, and so therefore it's quite easy, quite easy to do. And when you want to put it back together again, you go through like this, yeah. see, and then work your way right back and, and stick it over the spool. Uh -huh. Like that, and then pull, and you've got it right back on again. There it is. And there are many variations of this trick. Some, some work with a buttonhole, some work with two rings on the end of a string through various kinds of holes. And, and in fact, you know those wire puzzles that you have to twist to try to get loose? Uh, they yeah, look, They look yeah. like they're linked, but they're not really. Yeah. Well, they're, they're based on exactly the same idea of a closed loop. Well, now I know how to do all those puzzles. <laughs> uh, well, some of them are more difficult than this one. That, that's a relatively easy one. Yeah. But anyway, in topology now, you see the idea of a closed loop, regardless of how you distort it, is still a closed loop. Right. Well, now let's go to surfaces. Okay. Here's a surface over here. Piece of paper. Piece of paper. And topologists describe this in a different way than you might. They describe it by the number of surfaces and the number of edges. Mm-hmm. How many edges does this have and how many surfaces? Well, let's see, it has... Um two surfaces, the top and bottom, right? Top and bottom, and how many edges? Uh, four. One, two, three, four. In other words, there's one end on each, one, one edge on each end, and right. one along each side. Right. Okay. Then, watch what happens. I have a piece of double-faced tape on here, you see. So I can put these two ends together, like that. Right. Okay, now that changes that figure very, very su substantially. 
How many how many surfaces and how many edges now? Well, you have two surfaces. Two surfaces. And two, two uh, edges. Two edges. Yes, two edges. When then this. Uh, this I got rid of two out. edges right oh. here. I got by joining it. You see. So there's two surfaces and two edges. Two edges. Okay. Now, topologist then cut it in half. Uh huh. And what will happen when you cut it in half? You trust me with the scissors. Yes. I'll um. Well, I. You what should you have get? A, uh, two of the loops. All right. Try. That's simple enough even for me. <laughs> Watch your fingers. All right. There. Okay, you got two loops, both with two edges and two surfaces. I was right. Okay. Now, that's the beginning. Now, let's start with a very famous strip called a Mobius strip. Mobius? Mobius. Mobius. Yes. Here's the double face tape. Yeah. And this time, I'm going to join the edges just as I did before. But all I'm going to do is one simple thing. Instead of joining them like this, yeah. I'm going to give that one a half twist. What would you do that for? Well, now that's going to substantially change the whole thing. How many edges? Um, two edges. Now, how many surfaces? Two. I Let's think. check. You hold that pencil down there. Okay. Right here at the joint, and uh, make a mark, and I'll pull the paper, and we'll trace first one edge and then the other. All right. right? Oh, yeah. There you go. Um, don't lift the pencil up. I'm up. All right. It's still there. See what happened there? The joint. Yeah. Well, where, where's the... Yeah, well, keep going. All right. Oh, yeah. There. Still the same surface, Still right? Still the same surface, yeah. Can you see what you're, where you are? Right back where I started. But I did it on both sides and I didn't lift the pencil. No, you didn't do it on both sides. There's only one side. One? Yes. That's a surface that has two edges and only one... Uh, uh, two edges and one surface. Am I just putting the half twist in it? Yeah, by putting the half twist in it. This is, uh, this is a, uh, a very famous uh, a pi uh, strip in, uh, in topology called the Mobaya strip. So you can... Uh, Try that on your friends sometime. What'll happen when you cut it? Um, well, if there's just one surface. If you cut one surface yeah. in half, what should you get? Two loops. All right, try. Okay. I'll feed it like an assembly line. Yeah. Next. There. there. Now you cut it in half. I have two loops. One. One. Yeah. Just one big one. Yeah. So you see, topologists, as they begin to investigate these surfaces and edges and so forth, find that when you cut them, very strange things happen. Yeah. In fact, we won't try it now, but when you try this at home, just make that half twist in it and then cut it in thirds. In other words, cut three strips in it and see what happens. I won't tell you. Okay. What will happen now if we give it a full twist? I'm afraid to say, I, uh... That one was a half twist, right? Yeah. Now, let's get it all straight. Here's, here, here it is, standard. ordinary. Right. There's a half, half twist. twist. There's a full twist. Full twist. Okay. How many of your surfaces? How many edges? Um, let's see. You have two of the, uh... Two edges. edges. Yeah. How many I'm surfaces? I'm not going to say how many surfaces. All right, let's see if we can find You're out probably how probably have many. about three now. All right, know. all right. Let's see. Start there. Okay. You got it? Right. All right. Almost. See where you are? Right back where I started. Two surfaces this time. Yes. Well, just like the uh, before we put anything, any twists at all. Any twists in it at all. So therefore, by giving it a full twist, you got back to two surfaces again. But what happens when you cut it? All right, let's see if we can find out. Different story. Let's see what happens when you cut it. Do you think that it should end up with two halves like we had when we had two surfaces? I don't think I'd better think. All I think right, I just better cut.
Now, two loops. Two loops, but one inside the other is. <laughs> you see what? Quick what way to make change. You know, <laughs> what happened when you gave it the double twist? You in effect knotted them together, oh. but, but they weren't cut apart yet. So when you cut them apart, they end up knotted together. That's amazing what'll happen. Yeah. What about a twist and a half? Twist and a half, and that thing's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Uh, well, from what you found out, what happened when we gave only a half twist? Um, a half twist. How many surfaces? It do only we had have? one surface. So what do you suspect might happen here? One surface. That, wait, whoops, whoops. There's, there's, there's no the, twist. No twist. Half one, twist. Half twist. Yep. yep. One twist. And one and a half. Twist and a half. Okay. Now, what do you think? How many surfaces? How many edges? Two edges. How many surfaces? I'll take a guess. Yeah. Based on the uh, other one, I'll say one. Okay. Ah. Uh huh. You want to jump over the bump? Right. Yeah, thank you. Let me put the pencil. I know, but you put it right back down again. Right. Same surface. Yeah. Get... Wow, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we are. How many surfaces? One. One surface. By giving it the half twist. And what should happen now when we cut it? Well, you'll probably have something like one loop with two little ones knotted together inside. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to try to puzzle it out. You're going to no, try it. All I'll right, just try cut. It. How many loops? Two. No, one. Oh. But it's knotted. Yeah. Well, how'd that happen? Well, you did it when, you, when we gave it a twist and a half. It formed <laughs> one long loop, just like, the half, just like the half twist did, but by putting a full loop in it, you got a knot. That paper's pretty confused. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, you can see... Uh, there, there are all kinds of, in fact, uh, one of the pages of the book that I looked at some of this material on had a whole series of figures, uh, two edges, uh, one side, two edges, two, two surfaces, three edges, three surfaces, you can have all the different combinations, and uh, by cutting them you get all kinds of fantastic things, so maybe you ought to go to the library and get a book on topology and take a look at it, because yeah. there are a lot of tricks that you can play by, uh, by defining the number of edges and by twisting and so forth. Well, now then, there's, we've, so far we've seen something with lines, the idea of a closed loop. Mm -hmm. And we've seen something about surfaces with a number of edges and the number of surfaces, um, plain figures like this. Uh, now, how about solids? Solids? Yes. These were all sort of plain figures, you see, or lines or plain figures. But You're not going to cut a solid, no. <laughs> no, but topologists t uh, uh, do study uh, three-dimensional objects mm -hmm. and look at their surfaces and have defined them in a certain way. And those are those items I was playing with when you came oh, in. Oh, yeah. They, they all have something related. Now, come on around on this side first, because here are samples of the various kinds of figures that we're going to investigate. Mm -hmm. Here is some uh, children's uh, clay-like stuff, you know, that you can yeah, use. Yeah. And if you knead it into a, into a sphere, it has one continuous surface, right? Yes. Okay. Now, notice that it doesn't make any difference if you put a thing in here like that. As long as it does, the hole doesn't go through, that's still one continuous surface. Mm -hmm. And you can roll it out into this form, and that's still one continuous surface. Right. You bend it like that, that's still one continuous surface. In the same way that the closed loop remained a closed loop despite that you tied a knot in it, in the same way that the, that the paper had certain characteristics, this has the characteristics, and uh, has a certain characteristic, and they have defined it as various genuses, various categories. Genuses? Genuses. And they have said, let us call this genus zero, because there are no holes in it. All now, right. that's, that's not quite the way they define it, but for our purposes, that'll work. Okay. Genus zero. Right. Uh, doesn't make any difference what its shape is, as long as it doesn't have a hole that goes all the way through, it's genus zero. And you see that, these items over here? Mm-hmm. And you find a genus zero? This. Yeah, a little saucer. What? Okay. Now, let's put a hole in into this material, and that's defined as genus one. Genus one. Has a hole in it. Just goes in one little hole. Like a donut. Can mm -hmm. you see an object over there that has a hole, one hole in it? Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> cup. 
Well, you mean to tell me this donut and that cup are related because they both have one hole? It seems it, kind of odd, but well, yes. <laughs> can you form this donut into that cup without putting any more holes in it? Yeah, but it'll be a pretty sick looking cup. Now, here, I'll put my finger All in right. the hole, and you that's the only hole you get. Can you form that into a cup? Well, no. That's the handle, right there. Okay. There's your cup. <laughs> but the hole didn't go all the way through? And there's nope. a cup. And you see how that's that same figure, isn't it? Well, not quite. <laughs> it's well, close. Well, topologically it is. Yeah. It has the same relationship. So they are related. Yes. Now what if I put a hole through there where you just made an indentation? I now have two holes. Mm -hmm. And obviously that would be genus two. Uh-huh. Two holes? Yeah, two holes. And you make this into, into uh, a sugar bowl has two holes in it. Yeah. In the same way handle. that the cup had only one. These right. has two handles. Can you form this into a sugar bowl? Well, I can try. All right, I'll hold on to the two. Uh... All right. Oh, yep. You got that? Yeah. I'll turn them the way they belong, okay? Okay. Now, just. There's your sugar bowl. Well, it would have to. Well, I see you put a dice. <laughs> well, there it is, see? Yeah, great. There's a little place for sugar there and a uh, handle on each side. You'd be a great skunk. Oh, wouldn't that be that? great? point is that these two are, are very definitely related. Yeah. Now that hole that you made in there for this, if I make that go all the way through, we have three holes. Genus three? Genus three. And obviously there's only one thing left over here. Pretzel. Here. A pretzel has three holes in it. It's hard to believe that they're related, though. And you can now see how I, you could form this into a pretzel, but if that's as, the best you can do with a cup and a sugar bowl, I don't think you'll well, have a pretzel. That's a little tough. Okay. Now, however, you can see that they could have four, genus five, genus six, genus seven, depending on how many yeah, holes, anything. for our purposes, how many holes they have in it. Um, all right, now remember those items that you saw when you came in? Yeah. Look at them and tell me what genus they belong to. If it's zero genus, it has no holes. Uh -huh. One hole is yeah. genus, genus one, one, genus two, two and so forth. Right. All right. How about Starting that one? Starting with this. Yeah. Well, a pipe. A pipe. All right. It has one going in here. Well, that would be genus one. It has one hole. One hole. Continuous hole, even though it bends and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, very good. Um, no holes. No holes. So that would be genus... Zero, I guess. Gene is zero. Very good. Now. Watch for this one. Careful yeah. now. Careful. Well, it has one here, so. Okay, it's, so at least, it's at least one. At least, least one. genus one, right. Now, it goes around here. Well, here, let me, let me, let me take it apart for you. Mm. And you can see what happens inside. Now it goes around. Now, well, because of this, that would be another wrong. Uh, That's another hole, isn't it? So that would be uh, genus two. That's right. You see, when you put it together here, there's one hole here, and there's another hole in here. Right. So it's the same as the sugar bowl. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that seem amazing? It's... It, How about that one? This, let's see. One, right? Where? Here, one here. Oh, the round one on top, okay. One. Two. The square one sort of here, yeah. Okay. And three. Yes, three. This doesn't look like a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> sure it sure doesn't. But it is a... But it, topologically, it is very, very definitely related to a pretzel. Mm -hmm. All Hard right. to believe. How about oh. that one? That's a glass T that you use in chemistry, you know, for tubing. Yeah. What is it? Well, it's at least one because of this. Yeah. And this... Some people look at that and say immediately it's a three, because it has three holes. But they have to go um, all the way through. You see, there are two sides. So that this just, in a way, makes up one, actually. It's just stretched out. Oh. So I'd say it was... In other words, you'd say that this, if you forgot this side here... Yeah. <clears throat> this is like a great big long donut. Right. Genus one. Uh-huh. Now if you punch another hole in the side and put in this, <clears throat> you have the next genus, which is what? Genus two. Genus two. So it's a genus two. In spite of the fact that it looks like it has three holes in it. It doesn't look like it's related to the sugar hole. How, how about the little watering can? This, hmm. Well, it's at least one because there's a hole here. Mm -hmm. There's a hole here, though. Right. But that doesn't go all the way through. It's the same hole. Oh. Isn't it? Yeah. The hole comes in here, right. goes down, yeah. and comes out, and comes out here. So it's at least one. At least one. And it, oh no, wait a minute. no, this this doesn't isn't completed. Yeah. If that were completed here, it would be another hole, wouldn't it? Uh huh. But it isn't. Okay. Well, how about the next one? So that's a genus one. Right. This. This is a uh, genus. Have any holes in it? Well, not really. It's just wound up. Yeah. So it's what? I guess zero. Okay, and how about It doesn't about look related to this, though. <laughs> how about that one? Oh, this is about genus one, two, three, yeah, four, you're not the count them all. 
Anyway, you see how, in spite of the fact that these things don't seem to have any similarity to them to each other at all, you can classify them in the way topologists do by the number of really they do it by the number of surfaces. It's amazing. Yeah. And and in spite of the fact that we just played tricks with some of the ideas in topology, uh, you can imagine if you were examining a surface that had many different planes to it, and if you wanted to get some geometric information out about it, the fact that you might study the uh, the, the topology of it, you could uh, you know, make some quick mm. shortcuts in, in finding out. So this is what topologists do. But now how about that maze up there? You remember? Oh, yeah. yeah. I said I was going to show you how, how to tricky. solve it. Uh -huh. Well, you remember that that loop we made out of a wire solder? Yeah. Consider this. This is ordinarily a, uh, a hedge in the, in the one at Hampton Court in England. It, consider that a, a loop. The black edge here is one side of the loop, and that black edge it's is the, the other. other. Side. Well, remember how when you, if I took this and formed it into this maze, all you'd have to do is follow one side. Right. So go into Hampton Court maze or any other maze, put your left hand on the wall, and never take your hand off of that wall and trace it. All and right. watch, you'll think you'll be able to get inside. Right in there. Notice how you don't back up? Uh -huh. You constantly move because you're keeping your left hand on that wall? Yeah. All right. What happens when I get there? Well, you watch. There's a place to sit down or something. That's right. Now, there you go. You got into the center. Notice you didn't make any errors. No, no. And in the center here, there's a place where you can sit down and rest. Uh -huh. uh, and, however, uh, this works now with any maze, not just with the Hampton Court maze. Any maze? Any maze. Any time you get one of those rabbit getting into the pen or the cheese and the mouse or the knight and the lady or something, just pretend that the line itself is on one side and you follow it around because it's really a closed loop. You'll also find, if you came in here, yeah. Okay, all you have to do if this is really a, is a closed loop is stay right on this, work your way uh, around like right this, up. and you'll get right back out again because this is a, top a topologically closed loop. Try it.